Hi, this is Helene, and we're here at the Hippocrates Health Institute in the culinary program learning about how to build a salad. What we see before you is a beautiful array of sprouts, and this is really what we have at the Hippocrates Health Institute literally every day of the week, lunch and dinner, because this is the essence of how we build salads at the Hippocrates Health Institute. This is the essence of the Hippocrates diet. And I wanted you to see this beautiful array of sprouts so that you could start to familiarize yourself with what the possibilities are. But the practicality of it is that when you build a salad at home, it might look a little different, and we're going to get there. But before we do, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about these sprouts. I've never seen so many sprouts before I came to the Hippocrates Health Institute. And you know, at the store, your selection at your local store might be limited. What you can grow, depending on your environment, your accessibility to seeds and soil, you know, it's, it all varies. But let's dive in so you can understand a little bit more about what's what. So these guys you can find at most Asian grocery stores and Asian restaurants. These are thick rooted mung bean sprouts made also from the mung bean, right? But they look really different than the mung bean, which is here, right? Th these are actually mung beans. And this is one of the easiest sprouts to grow in your kitchen. These little guys are packed full of protein and fiber, phytonutrients, and are just delicious. Um, and, and also kind of heavy, right? They will fill you up. If you you know, have a little hunger, you throw a few of those in your mouth, you'll be set. On the line of beans, we also have lentils. Sprouted lentils are also one of the best sprouts to grow on your countertop. Super easy. And these are two different kinds of, of sprouted lentils. Delicious and nutritious. Another sprout that also I recommend growing at home easily is fenugreek. Fenugreek is a sprout that helps you regulate your blood sugar and it also helps you to have a regular bowel movement, right? It's really helpful for any kind of bowel irregularities. It helps to heal the gut. Such a beautiful, resilient sprout, fenugreek. These guys are equally as powerful but not as well known. These are radish sprouts. They're extremely spicy and also delicious. Now, you don't need a lot, but boy, are they good. And they're colorful, and you can uh, grow these really easily in your house if you've got a soil system set up. Gorgeous. And over here, we have onion sprouts. Not as easy to grow on your own, but possible. And these actually have equal amounts as broccoli and radish in those cancer-fighting properties, phytonutrients, antifungal, antiviral, rich in enzymes. So these guys pack a serious punch <laughs> in small quantities. And we have a spicy mix. This one you can find more easily at the grocery store, a spicy mix of sprouts. And you know, their name speaks for itself. I mean, when you take a, a bite of this, it tastes extremely spicy. That's actually the sulfur that's uh, kind of getting at the back of your throat there. Another sprout that's less common, but equally as interesting, is adzuki sprouts. You can grow these in your own kitchen. And these are adzuki beans, and you, uh, you can sprout them in your own kitchen. These are relatively easy to sprout. And uh, these are incredibly nutritious and full of protein. So this guy is really interesting. These are beet sprouts. I've never seen beetroot sprouts before I came to Hippocrates. The color is so inspiring. And they're known to help with virility. They're known to help with fertility. I mean, just look at this color, the phytonutrients. Where else do you see that color in nature? I know, I'm just totally inspired by these beetroot sprouts. These guys have got to be the star of sprouts in the mainstream media with their high levels of indole, three carbonyl, and sulforaphane. I know those are big words. Um, phytonutrients that help to combat cancer. The research out of Johns Hopkins University really brought these into the mainstream media. And these are being bought and sold at most grocery stores throughout the globe. You can find these readily um, at your grocery store. And this, I would say, would be an important sprout to have. And there are other sprouts here that have the same levels of these nutrients, these phytonutrients, but these are the most famous and probably one of the easiest to find out of most of the sprouts here. 
Moving on to clover sprouts, these guys are so good for your liver and they're tasty. They're really light and sweet and they're just delicious, layered into nori wraps or into other dishes. I love these on my salads, although I don't always have them at home, but I love them when I'm here. Some of the more important sprouts in my life that I try to and literally go out of my way to find in my daily life are sunflower seed sprouts. This is what I would equate to a regular, you know, standard American diet. This would be like our steak. This is what we seek for one of the most important sprouts in our diet because we put it in our juices, we put it in our salads, and honestly when I don't get my sunflower seed sprouts, I feel a little hungry. And these guys, I literally uh, make sure that I have as much and as frequently as possible, not only in my fridge, but also in my salad. Another sprout I had never even heard of until I came to the Institute over a decade ago are buckwheat sprouts. These are so beautiful. I don't know if you can see, but there's like this hue to the roots of these. It's kind of pink. And buckwheat sprouts are rich in enzymes, rich in phytonutrients, and these guys are also quite delicate. They don't hold up as well in terms of storage, but boy, if you can get them, they are so precious. We don't juice these sprouts. These are exclusively for our salads at Hippocrates, but they are gorgeous and they're tasty. I love to use them for, um, to like simulate pasta. They're almost like an angel hair pasta. Such a beautiful, beautiful sprout. These also are sought after, especially for our juices. These are pea shoot sprouts, and these grow in soil, and these are rich in phytonutrients, as you can see this gorgeous green color, enzymes, and they create like a really sweet, creamy texture in our juices. So these are wonderful to have around if you can get them or grow them to include in your juices. There are other things here as well, right? But those sprouts are the things that I wanted to bring your attention to today because how are we gonna build our salads? A couple other things that I haven't really spoken at length about are radishes, red, orange, and yellow peppers, these little baby peppers. We have cucumbers, right? Those are really easy to find. They're really normal and common. This mescaline greens, these are awesome and easy to find, get them anywhere. What else could be here, right? You could probably put carrots here, or you could put um, other things that you love, like fennel, or um, some other vegetable that you get on a regular basis that you love at your grocery store. Exclusively today, we have a couple of special visitors. This is watercress. Watercress, I find really easily at the grocery store as well, usually alive even in the grocery store. This is probably one of the few sprouts that survived the last 30 years outside of broccoli that came back to life. But watercress just seems to be in the mainstream for a, a salad that we're seeking. Here as well as arugula. I love arugula, these greens. You can find boxed in most grocery stores. And then we have, of course, asparagus, really rich in glutathione. Right, why did I choose these vegetables? Right? Some of them are easy to find, some of them aren't easy to find, but let's get down to it. How do you build a salad? What do you do when you want to build a salad, Hippocrates style? Well, honestly, a lot of this stuff can go away. So I'm going to take the adzuki beans away. These, um, you know, I love them. They're wonderful, but I'm going to take those away. I'm going to take the uh, mung beans away as well, right? And if I just had to choose a couple of things for my salad, because that's really what it ends up being at home taking the clover sprouts, although I love you, they're gonna have to go to the side. The beetroot, these aren't easy to find. I'm gonna keep a couple of things, but I'm gonna lose some things as well. Because let's face it, I want you to be successful. And the only way you're gonna be successful is by making it simple, easy, and fun. And it's gotta be that. Sometimes when we start a new program of eating, a new diet, we want to be doing it perfectly. We want to follow all the rules, right? But I want to, I want to encourage you to use what you have because a good chef always uses what she has. And honestly, I don't want you to stress out about it or get neurotic because that's no fun and that's actually not healthy at all. 
So what do we have? So if you're going to have anything, you want to try to have sunflower seed sprouts. And this I love to use as well, these mescaline greens, as a base. So what's the base of your salad? So I want you to be thinking about that when you go to the grocery store. Every three to four days, when you go to the grocery store, what's the base of my salad? And this is an easy base, mescaline greens. You take it. And you want to really be generous about the base in your salad, right? Now, this is good, but honestly, you're not going to get the level of satisfaction in the satiation feeling after you eat, nor in the cellular integrity that the Hippocrates diet promises and has fulfilled on a promise over the last 60 plus years because of the sprouts. So we do need to be taking the time and energy and effort to either grow them or find them. And we're going to provide you some resources, uh, but ultimately growing them is is ideal. Now, on, it, it's not possible to do that all the time. And it's not possible to always have sprouts, and that's okay. So then you just do the best you can with what you've got. So maybe you just have the greens as a base. Maybe you're lucky enough to have some sprouts to go on top. So if we had to choose one other ingredient, what would it be in terms of a base for our salad? Well, I'm going to choose broccoli sprouts because of their famous life-giving properties I'm going to choose these broccoli sprouts, decorate it a little bit. You don't want too many because, well, I don't want too many because, you know, I, I want it to, to have a certain type of flavor. So I'm going to decorate a little bit with the broccoli sprouts, try to make it look a little pretty. So if you have three things, if you have to choose three things to build your salad with, I choose a nice green base. And then I'm going to choose the sunflower seed sprouts and the broccoli sprouts. And then you could add a few vegetables, you know, add some color. Add some of these, this adds texture and color. You know, we've got the red, the orange, the yellow. Um, and then we could also add some cucumbers, right? Those are really easy to find. They add texture, they add hydration, they add beauty. It's fun. <laughs> and if you want, we could add also a little bit of a, a uh, radish, right? So that's pretty. Do a little bit of radish there. So it could be really simple. This could be your sprout salad lunch. Really simple. We don't necessarily need all these sprouts, right? We don't necessarily need them all. Because if it gets monotonous, then it gets boring. If it, if it gets boring, then you stop and you go to something else. And then your body starts to crave other things that may not be as ideal. Because you, you do, you crave a certain satisfaction. And when you build a Hippocrates salad, you want to be thinking about what's my base. And then you want to be thinking, what sprouts can I get or grow? And it could be one, two, or three. I highly recommend having on hand pea shoot sprouts, sunflower seed sprouts, so you can make your juice. And if you can't get those, it's fine. Juice some arugula, juice some dandelion. But you know, go easy on yourself and do your best to stay the path in living the Hippocrates diet. And this could be your lunch, this could be your dinner, this could be both. And every day I encourage you to, to change it up. Maybe one day you don't have peppers and you only have radishes. Maybe one day you don't have radishes and you decide to have some, some sprouts, some lentil sprouts, right? Maybe you want to add a little extra protein if it's a carbohydrate day, for example. You could add some, some of these beautiful legumes. Maybe you'd like to add a few a few stalks of, uh, of asparagus, right? Just to add that. It still needs a little color, doesn't it? It needs some like red. I'm always looking at when I'm building a salad, the colors and the textures, right? So here we've got the texture of this broccoli sprout. We've got the crunchiness of the cucumbers, the crunchiness of the asparagus. We've got the softness of the salads and then the, 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 the little bit tougher uh, version of the sunflower seed sprouts and, and I do love watercress. I try to include watercress as often as possible, right? So there's really no, there's no end to what you can do when you build your salad and I don't want it to feel complicated for you. So if you choose three things, a sprout or two, a base that you can find and then you layer on whatever local seasonal vegetables you have that are raw, that are health-giving, that are life-giving, because here at the Hippocrates Health Institute, all of our food is life-giving. It's alive, it's raw, and it has a tremendous amount of enzymes. So it's light to digest, so that your cells can rejuvenate themselves quickly. 
And some people look at it, they might get intimidated. Some people look at it and they say, well, it's kind of overwhelming. And that's why I just want to simplify it. I'm going to take some more things away. I want to oversimplify it for you because it doesn't need to be complicated and I don't want it to be complicated. You can even just put a little lemon juice and olive oil and call it a day. You're good to go, right? We don't need fancy condiments or, or fancy sauces. Like this is possible. It's possible in your kitchen and it's possible when you're traveling and it's possible anywhere in the world. So to build a salad is unique to you. And actually, I'm actually really curious how you build your salad. And I'd love to hear more about it in terms of what flavors and textures and colors you're finding. Because that's where the excitement starts to grow because we get to share and be inspired by each other because there's so much possibility. It's literally endless. I love the idea of just setting up all these bowls on the table if you, if you have a family and everyone kind of picks and chooses. Then you can learn about what everyone's preferences are and introduce them to the idea of living foods. Because the Living Foods Healing Diet at the Hippocrates Health Institute is unlike any other in terms of what it delivers for your health and your longevity, for your youthfulness, for the prevention of diseases. The list goes on and on and on. But we have to start here. It's really one bite at a time one meal at a time. And this is what it looks like. Super simple, super easy, and hopefully also fun. We'll see you again soon.